Hello, I'm Doug McKenzie and welcome to The Fintech Show. Now, this is a special spin-off series called How to Build a Bank and it's being sponsored by our friends over at Mambu. We're going to be speaking with various different guests, inspirational speakers from around the world, bring them here either into our studio or catch up with them around the world to find out how they would build a bank. Now we're splitting it into multiple different columns of the really important pillars of how you would build a bank. Now on today's episode, we're gonna be looking at how to build a bank in the cloud. And joining us today, we have three guests who are right at the heart of that topic. Of course, we've got AWS, we've got N26, and we've also got Bamboo. And I'm really excited to find out how these organizations are being powered or powering the cloud to enable anyone to really be able to create a bank. So without further ado, let's find out more. Will, thank you so much for joining us here today at FF News' How to Build a Bank series. How are you doing? I'm great, good to see you. Great to see you too. Will, for our viewers who may not know, could you give us uh, a breakdown on yourself, your job role and your organization, please? Sure, so I'm Will Sorby. Um, I work for N26, um, one of Europe's largest neobanks, um, and I'm director of product. Now, Will, to set the scene, I want to know, really, there seems to be a separation between digital banking and cloud-based banking. Could you give our viewers a little bit of an insight to that, please? Sure. So, digital banking is really how people understand modern banks to be working. Um, now, that can apply to what we call neobanks in the industry, what you know, most people would know as the likes of N26. There are others out there um, who I'm sure your, your listeners will, will know. Um, or it can even be um, old, older banks. So digital banking is effectively banking through your phone, banking through a website, through digital mediums. Now, cloud banking is effectively the technology that we use to deliver that to our, our users. Our user, bluntly, shouldn't need to know what cloud banking is. That's how we think about it, it's how we deliver it. But it's effectively us building our technology through the cloud, um, distributed, um, and then th there's lots of benefits that comes with that that helps us build better products for our users and, and brings them a lot of value indirectly. Um, but it's, it's, for, it's sort of separate from the medium that they effectively use the services, which in our case is, is digital. What are some of the advantages of being able to scale up using cloud-based banking right. rather than maybe an on-premise kind of traditional server? Yeah, and I think there's, this comes back to when we talk about banking, there's always two terms in terms of running the bank and building the bank. And I'm using banking here very loosely. It can be any financial organization. Now, let's think about running the bank. That's a day-to-day -day operations. And then building the bank, that's sort of the innovation, financial innovation hub, new products. Okay, so let's think of the running the bank. Now, when it comes to running the bank, and I'm going to use an example here, we want to have processes best for the client. So you might have a client that might only swipe their card after payday because they are a cash user. So for them, when they go to the ATM, they want to have the ability to go and get their money. But for the bank, it's a peak, right? So all the transactions happen on that day, there might be long queues, and the worst thing is to have the system out that day uh, so the customer won't be able to get their money now you might think that as a as a bank hey we're 98 percent up but it's actually 100 percent down for that customer always uh, this is where cloud banking and other services come in the ability to uh, have peaks and trough managed without all those costs that you have to incur with the on-premises you can greatly give a better end product to that customer so that customer doesn't churn that they always have the availability of their money. Because at the end of the day, they don't want to think about that. At the end of the day, they just want to have access to their money. So by leveraging cloud services like uh, scalability is an excellent point of view of how you can keep yourself relevant. So being on-prem on is for financial institutions. I can speak for financial institutions and probably some, you know, some regulated industries. Yeah. There's amount of um, why there is an attachment to on-prem is that has been existing for more than 100 years, yeah. 50 years, right? We don't say to our customers, oh, you need to migrate everything tomorrow. We do it one step at a time. What is that um, workload, as we say, or that particular unit of your business that is critical now to, to move? 
Right. So it's more than digital, it's really change management. Mm -hmm. Because cloud is not just, yes, we do sell technology, but at the end of the day, you're also selling a, a change of culture and mindset in ways of working. Yeah. So the company or an institution needs to understand that. So you need to have four components, as we say. One is you need to have that executive sponsor from the CEO to the board that this is what we want to do because it's a strategic move for everybody. Second is you need to understand how that operational excellence would be maintained or exceeded. As we say in Amazon or AWS, we say, how do you raise the bar? So how do you do that? So the second is the organization. How do you now train your end users to this new technology that you're introducing? Because people think when you have technology, you're going to cut jobs, you're going to... It's not true. It's making you efficient in day-to-day -day lives that you do. So think about the customer at the center of it again. And fourth but not the least is how do you measure the small milestones? Again, you don't boil the ocean. You measure your projects in chunk. So that's how we approach it. Because if you say a big bang approach, everybody likes it. It just gives you short-term success. But what we want for our customers is long-term. So that iterative, your continuous innovation, as we call it, is there. So that's the approach that we have for, for, for these kinds of uh, customers that we have. Now, one thing that I think characterizes the fintech industry is its love of partnerships. How does using cloud-based technology enable you to work with best-in-class providers at various different parts of the ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. So by, by building in, in the cloud and working with others who have done the same, that's effectively how we're able to build through APIs to connect with other people. Now that's not sort of super complex, but the, the fact that we're able to do that means that we can focus on what we're actually going to build that brings value. Um, what do I mean by that? If we were the first bank in the world and the only one, you have to build everything. The number of people you need to do that, the scale of that task is huge. Now there's a lot of things out there that already exist today that other people have done, other people have done very, very well. And that may not be the stuff that we can do best, but it may be something that actually our, our users want somehow. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I can take an example. We work with, with Wise. Guys do a great job on, um, on international transfers at you know, super good rates. That's, that's something that, you know, why would people not want to access that? Now, that's not core to what you know, what we're building day to day as, as, a, as a bank for people to go and spend money, save money, you know, all the things that you want from your bank. So when we come and look at that, we can go, well, this is something that's important to our users. Um, do we want to build it ourselves? Or is there someone else out there who can, who's already done it and we can be very quick in plugging it in? It may be that we want to build it ourselves, but that might take us two years. And I would far sooner our users are able to access that quickly now and we can work with someone who's, who's done that. So by building in the cloud, we're able to do that. Um, and you know, as you and obviously if anyone's listening to this will know, be familiar with the fintech world, there's such a rich ecosystem of people out there, whether it's sort of you know, public features or even infrastructure service that we use in the background, there's quite a few different partners that we work with in, in different parts of the bank. It just allows us to be much more effective with, with our time. So we, we build, you know, invest it well. So always remember in the business, right, whether you're a uh, multi, you know, national or a multi-global firm or even a startup, you would always have a front end, a middle and a back office. It's always the case, whether you're in arts or creativity, there's always some people there at the back doing a lot of things for you. Then the middle negotiating and doing that quality check. And then, of course, the front end is where we are right now, right, with the technology behind us. So think about it. At the end of the day, are, there are people behind those machines. There are people behind those uh, processes that you have. The most important thing is, if you put them at best, they will be at best in front of your customer. Because at the end of the day, there's, um, there's someone out there that's really going to get that product and say, what my, what's my customer journey look like? It goes the same. So in, in Amazon or AWS, we always have this, uh, we do write a lot. So when we write, we always put the customer. So we have a vacant, even in, in meetings, we have a vacant seat wow. in the conference room. Yeah. That vacant seat, we imagine the customer is sitting there. That's so tremendous. if you're talking in corporations, we think about who is that persona yeah. that we're going to talk about this. So we, we, you know, I call it empathetic business. 
So you put yourselves in the shoes of your customer. So that's how we always do um, in, in Amazon. So that's the approach. Now that's all we've got time for on this episode of How to Build a Bank. It's been absolutely brilliant hearing from companies like AWS, N26 and Mambu because they are the ones that are really pioneering this technology and also putting it into practice. Thank you for watching as well. You can catch the rest of the series and much more over at ffnews.com. Thank you very much and goodbye.